Hello again, and welcome to another episode of Leading from Alignment with our good friend, John Opaluski. How are you today, John? Hey, Jim. I'm really good. It's so good to spend time chatting with you before we started recording today. I agree. And, and I would say, before you say anything else, iron sharpens iron. And if you got somebody in your life that's not asking you tough questions and able to, that you can confide in, you need friends, you know, so it's good to have friends. So today is episode 110. And, uh, this is something that every leader is going to need to kind of tune in. This is a good one for staff meetings. This is a good one to listen to with your spouse. Uh, this is going to be a good episode just, and it's for everybody. This is, there'll be no one listening today. They'll be like, I didn't need that. And tell us, why don't you tell us what uh, episode 110 is about? Sure. The, the title is, when is it time to stop? And uh, I wanted to ask you a question just to get rolling here, Jim. Um, I mean, did, I wonder if you're like me. Do you ever arrive at mid-afternoon on a workday and feel like your brain has turned to jello? Yeah, uh, useless. Like, like <laughs> I mean, one of the reasons right over here is, is a couch. One of the reasons there's a couch in my office is for that moment. So I can I can literally lay down, close my eyes for 10 minutes, slap myself around a little bit and try to get back to work. Yeah. Yeah, several years ago, Laura and I... Uh, had had just this super busy stretch. Uh, it's like eight weeks. It, within an eight week stretch, we had two trips to Minneapolis, one to Iowa, and one to Montana. Um, you know, interspersed with some large events here in Michigan. And and I remember distinctly. I remember this. This happened maybe four or five years ago. But I still remember the day uh, where I was trying to work, and it, and we got to about three in the afternoon, and I was just like gasping for mental right. oxygen. Uh. Um, and, and, you know, Laura's seen that movie before uh, in, my, in my life. Uh, right, right. And, and she's, you know, she encouraged me, John, just, you know, just stop. Just shut yeah. it off. Uh, and, and, you know, normally uh, I would have pushed through, gutted it out for another three to four hours. And, and, and Jim, 25 years ago, that's, that was kind of my day-to-day -day existence. You know, I would push through exhaustion almost every day. And I think, I think uh, not only did it, decreased the quality of my work. It definitely decreased my quality of life. There it is. Yeah. It's not just the work because we're not factory workers, right? right. If I got just not in this bolt for three more hours, I can figure out a way to dig deep and do it. If I'm creating, if I'm, mm -hmm. if, if it requires my heart to be engaged, not just my hands and my heart is exhausted. My mind is exhausted. Yep. Then we are, we're working for nothing sometimes. Right. And, and I do believe, you know, there are days that we have to push through, right? I mean, those days just happen. But I think if that's your daily default, mm -hmm. uh, you're setting yourself up for a lot of trouble. So um, that's really what I'd like us to talk about. Is there a legitimate time to stop uh, during our, our work days? And I yep. think you may have heard this before, Jim. Uh, I've heard some well-meaning leaders tell me there's there's no time to stop until the work is done. As a matter of fact, I've heard a head of a denomination say that. Um, and, and I just thought to myself, well, yeah, but you know what, as a pastor, as a leader, um, as a parent, you know, whoever you are, whatever station in life you're in, the work really never is finished. No. Right. And I think that's the difference. There's a, there's not a time to be finished. I mean, the work will not be finished. Right. Say there's, then you should never stop working. That. That actually violates biblical law of Sabbath. That's right. Uh, he's just saying my yoke is easy. My burden is light, which doesn't mean it's, it's not complex or it's not trying, but it, it we're, yeah, we, we can make it a lot harder. We can make the yoke a lot heavier yes, than Jesus can. made it because of misformed, um, you know, lies really. That's right. And yeah. so I'd like us to kind of look at three, maybe three things that tell us, it's time to stop, you know, and uh, I don't think there's a clear line, but I think these clues might help us determine uh, when to put it in part. How's that sound? Yeah. yeah, hit me. Okay, so here's the first one. When the people who love you tell you stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That, that shouldn't be too vague. No, I think that's that's pretty clear. I, I, I remember when I was in college uh, and I man, Jim, in college, I kept a crazy pace. I, uh, I, I was one of those people who studied 50 hours a week on top of going to class and working part time because I wanted to get A's. You know, I was I was yeah. motivated. And I remember my one of my brothers would call me periodically at college. I went to college in Oklahoma and he'd say, John, how's it going? And I would just, you know, unload on him yeah. like, oh, I've got so much going on. And 
And he would tell me this, this is an older saying, but he said, John, you need to take time to smell the roses. Stop. In in, in other words, you know, quit running a hundred miles an hour every day and learn to enjoy some moments. So what what do you think about that one, Jim? Yeah, I I think that there is a, you know, again, I'm the grandson of a factory worker, right? Mm-hmm. My, my granddaddy sat down in 1936 and formed the UAW in Flint, Michigan with the rest of the stubborn old guys. You know what I mean? Um, and, and that's when you, when you have a factory mentality, if we can speed this up by three seconds a day, we can produce four more cars. So we don't have time for conversation. We don't have time to smell the roses. We have time to move the, move, move the iron. That's what we do here. And then when you're done, you can go home and fall into bed exhausted and get up the next day with arthritis and try it all over again. It's a, we, we enslave ourselves. I, I think our souls are not meant to have an endless capacity. I think that when we're tired and exhausted, you know, when I'm really hungry and you put a Twinkie in front of me, I'll eat the Twinkie like it's actually food, you know? And if I'm exhausted emotionally and you put an episode of a sitcom in front of me, I'll eat it like it's actually life. Yeah. And, and it's not, it's, it's imitation. It's false. Um, I have to have my soul engaged for me to read scripture properly. I have to have my soul engaged to relate to people properly. So if I'm exhausting myself on some task, you know, if I'm, you know, love God, love people, like love your neighbor, yourself, love God. Those are, that's number one. Number two, well, those, those take enough effort and, and accomplishing something with the purpose of your life requires effort as well. But this thought that if I don't exhaust myself, I'm not doing it well, contradicts the life of Jesus. There, there are yeah. moments, seasons where he is working really, really hard. And the Sabbath is for man, man wasn't made for the Sabbath, but, right. but, but God observed a Sabbath. The father observed a Sabbath. Sure. He wasn't tired. He only spoke a handful of words. So it's not like he's exhausted. He's omnipotent, but omniscient. But, I, but he, he, he did it because he set an example for us. So I, I do believe in running hard. But if you run hard 14 days in a row, you send one of those days. That's right. And, and, and I think sometimes, Jim, we don't always know we're doing that. I mean, you, you would think we would know that, right? But we get caught into the, 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 I don't know what you call it, the tidal wave, or we get caught in the tsunami or the surge. And we, there are people in our life who love us. Yeah. And they know us better than anybody else. Yeah. And they know sometimes before we know that it's time to stop. And so I want to encourage you. We want to encourage all of you who are listening or watching, listen to the people who love you the most when they encourage you to punch out for the day. Right. And, and can I say, I think I, I know what the next sentence is going to be as well. And I, and I think that's another sign, right? Tell us, tell us what the next one is, because I think that's sign our loved ones are telling us because they see the detrimental effect on our life. That's right. And so uh, another clue that it's time to stop is when you become irritable. Yeah. And sometimes a loved one telling you to stop makes you feel irritable. Right? <laughs> um, yeah. Like, you don't know how much I got going on in my life. Oh, you know, don't worry about me. I know what I'm doing. You know, don't bother me. And, and I think irritability has, it's really a, an early warning system, Jim, of sorts, yeah. uh, that, that it's time to decelerate. Um, I think irritability has often been linked to immaturity mm-hmm. and, um, or a lack of character development. And I think that's true sometimes, right? That, that that's actually true. But I think at other times, irritability is simply a signal that we've reached our capacity. Yeah. What do you think about that? I, yeah. I, you, if I'm in pain, I'm not in a good mood. And, I, and when I've caused my own pain through exhaustion, I'm not, I'm not in a good mood. And I think that might be what the loved ones are saying sometimes. It's your, mm-hmm. You come home a disaster. Yeah. When, you, when you're all done getting everything out there, then you come home to us a disaster. And I, I think, again, that encouraging, but sometimes it's not encouraging. It's silence. Right. You're, you're, you're Lack of wisdom is causing pain in our family now, in our marriage now, in our friendships now. Yep. Um, yeah, you. I, somebody wrote a book years ago, but some one of my staff members talked about it in a devotion one time about margins, keeping yeah. that that eighty percent full and and rich and good, but that twenty percent around you because eventually there is a car that breaks down or someone locked the key yeah. inside the door or, you know, the emergency comes up or there's there's a, the hospital call. It's it, like you're saying it doesn't end. But we, we do have we do have ends. We do have limits. Correct. So moving intelligently, intuitively, biblically through the challenges of our life. Um, yeah, we should not be easily angered. And what is anger but a secondary emotion that we reach to when we feel powerless? 
Yep. So everybody wants me to do something. Would you just all quit? Just be quiet for a second. Let me think about it. Well, we're, we're, we're invoking our own fleshly power to try to overpower the demands of our lives. And I, I agree completely. I think it's a great one. That exhaustion. I've never been exhausted and happy at the same time. I can't, mm-hmm. you know, I've never been overwhelmed and happy at the same time. Yeah. And so maybe anger, if you're experiencing anger, more anger than normal in your life, it's a signal that you're yeah. overscheduled or overcommitted that it's time to stop, take a breath and, yeah. and regroup. So that's the second clue uh, let me yeah. give you a third one here jim uh and that's when the creative juices dry up yeah yeah and if it comes to our souls right mm-hmm. and our souls have been expended yeah so i'm a morning person and i know somebody i know some folks who are listening and watching today spell morning m-o-u-r-n-i-n-g <laughs> morning. <laughs> um they're not morning people but i, I have a ton of energy uh, from mental energy and emotional energy from about six in the morning until about two in the afternoon. And, and it's like, it's yep. like clockwork when two o'clock hits the, the jellification process in my brain starts. And, um, yep. and I've discovered that shifting to work that requires much less mental energy um, is really a good strategy for me. Um, and, and so what I've learned to do is when I, when I feel, and, and Jim, I think for a long time, I didn't really have a sensitivity to that, but I do now. It's almost like a switch in my head goes off. Right. And I know, you know, you are, John, you are tired. Yeah. It's time to shift to something easier to work on and leave the more mentally demanding tasks to the next day. And I've learned to do that. And I, in the next day, I, ta- I, I re-engage with those tasks and I'm able to do them better and get them done faster yep. when I say, okay, I, I don't have enough in the tank to deal with this. I'm going to move it to the next morning. Um, give me some thoughts on that. Yeah, I, I think, you know, creativity, we think of like producing something wonderful and fresh. But for me, sometimes creativity is the creativity to deal with problems. Yes. And I find that, like you're saying, between 5 a.m. and noon, I can deal with problems all day long. It's wonderful. Two o'clock in the afternoon, I, I find myself, again, tired. I'm a little bit crabby. I'm a little bit overwhelmed. I'm a little bit, my, my wife knows that after two o'clock in the afternoon, if she wants to have a meaningful conversation about work, that, that she should just wait until 5 a.m. the next day. I'm better at 5 a.m. with a cup of coffee, petting my bulldog in the morning with my Bible open than I ever will be in the rest of the day. So yeah. there's a, I, I, a creativity to produce something that, that God wants to see on the earth is great. But I also think we need creativity just to deal with life. That's and so, and our soul inspired, man, it's, it's a, it's a self-imposed misery, mm-hmm. you know, like we're not slaves. Slaves had to get up and do what they didn't want to do longer than they wanted to do it for people that didn't care about them. And, and if, if I don't care about me and I do something longer than I, I want to do it and I don't even want to do it, I, there's no slave master. I, I've actually become my own slave master. Right. I've enslaved myself to a life that I really don't relish. That's yeah. foolishness. That's, that's foolishness. And Jim, I, um, the reason I wanted to talk about this today is because I think we've kind of lost this idea of stopping points, you know, this whole concept, you know, of a rhythm between work and rest. And you mentioned it earlier, you know, God uh, expended in creation this amazing amount of energy. And then there was a pause yeah. and that was repeated six times. Um, and because we don't know when to stop or feel guilty when we do, um, yeah we give way to this inaccurate idea that activity always equals productivity. Yeah. Uh, you know, that busyness always proves our value and that stopping before we collapse in exhaustion is not a good use uh, of our time. But, yeah. you know, Jim, research tells us that for most of us, normal people, after eight hours of work in a day, our productivity falls off a cliff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so when you're tired, here, here's our heart uh, today. When you're tired after a solid day, a uh, day's worth of work, accept that as a yeah. God given stop signal, you know, yeah. give yourself permission to clock out We're we're not calling you to be lazy. We're calling you to be sensible. Yeah. And yeah. so, so take time to decelerate at the right time. And that's going to be different for everybody. Right. Cause I know Jim, we're, we're talking to folks today, some folks who are 
they're not morning people. They're, they have more energy in the afternoon and evening. Yeah. You know? So they're going to have to make this, they're going to have to figure it out for themselves. But, right. but if we do this well, this stopping well, our, our health is going to prosper and our, product, our productivity is going to soar at the same time. Can I just point out one other thing? And maybe our, our Hebrew sure. scholars that listen to this can, can correct me if I'm wrong. But if I understand the narrative of creation, you know, there's something that happens on day one, day two, day three, day six. Adam and Eve are formed and they're commissioned, you know, mm-hmm. just fill the earth and subdue it. And it's like they're commanded now to do it. But then like their day one is is not it's not creation. They're, they've been created. Their next day is a day of rest. And yeah. it's interesting to me that, that everything we have to do is given to us. And then we rest and then from rest. So we don't work until we're exhausted. We begin with rest and then we work. Yep. And I, I think we've got it wrong. And again, probably in my, in my life, because of the Western mindset, the factory yeah. mindset, the you know, cram for the test mindset, it's just the way you've kind of gotten along through your life. But if you're going to create and if you're going to be in relationship, then I think that knowing what we're supposed to do, resting before we do it, and then doing it is a much better way than doing what we're supposed to do until we're exhausted and then trying it again tomorrow. We have five more days of this you know, before we get another day off. We have to mow our lawn, wash our dog, make up our you know, our promises, go to Little League, hit the soccer practice. It's just we are way, way, way too busy to be creative people by and large. And I, I think that this is a great teaching for everybody. You know, Jim, you, and you, you just hit the nail on the head. I think we have it totally backwards. Yeah. Um, we way too often work to rest, not work from rest. Yes. Yeah. And, and I'm guilty of that. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, there are, there are weeks where I get that right. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And there are weeks when I don't get that right. And I can tell the difference between those two weeks. Yeah. Um, when I get it right, I, I, I feel refreshed. I feel energized when I get it wrong. I feel tired. I feel brain fog. Um, <clears throat> I pray Jesus, please come back. Yeah. <laughs> um, because I'm, I'm so exhausted. I don't think I can do anything else. And so it really is a paradigm shift, a, a, a total shifting of our thinking, Yes. about about this. And so appreciate you bringing that up uh, here at the end of uh, Pod 110 today. Right on. Well, John, I, I benefit from these conversations. I know everybody does. And I, I will say this, and, and it, it's in the way of a question, because knowing the right thing to do and, and finding out how to do it or the courage to implement it or communicating it with your team, those are two different things. Yes. And sometimes the inspiration of a conversation like this needs to be placed in the category now of application. You know, how do I apply this? And I, I, you know, you're here. Tell us about how we can contact you to, to continue this conversation. Yeah, I, I would just say this. You know, I, I need I need a mentor in my life. I have mentors in my life who yeah. are telling me to slow down, yeah. um, who who are encouraging me. And so we encourage you. Uh, try not to figure this out all by yourself. Find somebody to help you. Um, we can help you. There are other good coaches out there that can help you. But if you are interested in talking to us, go to convergecoach.com and select the contact us link. And that brings up this form, it takes you like 30 seconds to fill out. And we'll give you 30 minutes of our time for free to yeah. see if uh, we can be of any use to you or not. And if we can't, we'll direct you to somebody we know who can help you. Right on. Good. Because I'm a guy that's read 14 different books about how to slow the pace of my life. And, yeah. and it takes more than a mentor. We jokingly say it takes a tormentor. And they tell us that they're like, I'm going to create the accountability that you yeah. need to implement what you know is right. So God That's bless right. you. Thank you. And God bless you, our listeners and watchers. It's always a joy to be trusted in this manner. And we don't take it lightly. So yeah. on behalf of John Belusky and myself and all the Converge staff, we just want to say thanks for joining us. And we'll see you again soon as you continue to lead from alignment.